Armenia, a land of mountains, a land of crosses. For centuries, it has been a bulwark of Christianity in the mysterious Caucasus. Under the banner of the cross, many gave their lives here in never-ending conflicts with Persians, Arabs, and Turks. But when the enemy had been repulsed, new churches and monasteries were built. That was also the case in the 10th century, the era of the Armenian Renaissance. The monastery of Sanahin was founded in the north of the country, where the industrial town of Alaverdi now dominates the landscape. Extended time and again up to the 13th century, it stands out through its impressive entrance halls, known as gavits. This three-nave hall in Sanahin has no dome. It is harmoniously subdivided by arcades consisting of short columns and elegant arches. Located at an altitude of 1,200 meters and just three kilometers away as the crow flies is Sanahin's dissimilar fellow monastery, Hagpat. With its thick walls, Hagpat seems to rise up out of the ground as if to block the path of an adversary. A monastery is a place of refuge from whose towers a close watch could be kept on the surrounding countryside. Hagpat was founded in the middle of the 10th century, only a few years after Sanahin. Its saddle roofs are reminiscent of watchtowers and bunkers because Hagpat is not only a place of pious contemplation, it was designed as a fortified monastery. One special architectural feature is a sculpture portraying two kings, Gorgon and Sumbat, on the east gable of the monastery's church of the Holy Cross. Wearing oriental headgear, they are seen presenting a model of what was the first sacred building at Hagpat. The brothers continued the work of their royal mother, Kosrovanush, who founded Sanahin and Hagpat for the well-being of her sons. Occupying the highest point of the complex is an architectural masterpiece and the hallmark of Hagpat, an octagonal bell tower built in 1245. Tempered by rosettes, the strict geometry of its windows can be interpreted as a human shape and as the cross which decorates Armenian architecture in diverse forms. On the outer corners, stalactite baldachins seem to transform the 34-meter-high bell tower into an Islamic building. But in the immediate vicinity is the omnipresent cross. The bell tower's various stylistic elements are the architectural expression of Armenia's position between east and west. Window decorations of this kind are peculiar to Armenia. They remind us of women's long eyelashes. The eyelash windows could also have been firing slits, which would be in keeping with the defensive character of Hagpat Monastery. For many centuries, this was the only direct route from the valley up to Sanahin Monastery. A queen had the bridge built in 1192 in honor of her late husband. Together with the two monasteries, the arched bridge over the river Debed is part of Armenia's world cultural heritage. Three churches, two entrance halls, a bell tower, an academy and a library make up the monastic complex of Sanahin. A majestically strict architecture, enriched with delicate ornamentation. The oldest edifice is the church of St. Astvat Satsin. Built in 934, it is dedicated to the Virgin Mary. The gavits are a typically Armenian architectural feature. They are usually more impressive than the churches they serve as entrance halls. The gavits at Sanahin were built two to three hundred years after the churches. The earliest Armenian gavits are thought to date back to the 11th century. 
We can't be absolutely certain as to their precise function, but it's possible to imagine them being used as multi-purpose halls. The gavets, with their arches weighing many tons, and their cushion columns were perhaps the architectural expression of monastic power. They will also have served as a place of assembly for ordinary citizens as well as high-ranking clergy. And people probably also sought divine protection here from invaders who were an all too frequent threat. It was not uncommon either for the Gavits to serve as the last resting place of the monks and deacons who lived in the monastery. Sometimes particularly pious laymen were also buried in the Gavits. They lie at peace in Shamatun Gavit, the final resting place of the pious in a transitory world. In Sanahin, only a few ledgers have been preserved that evidently portray human figures. After all, for centuries the Armenian Orthodox Church clearly distanced itself from such images. Tradition has it that in the late third century, Christianity was proclaimed the state religion in Armenia. This land in the Caucasus thus became the world's first Christian country. The Armenian church supports the doctrine of monophysitism. It recognizes Christ as the truly divine Son of God. Like most other Christian Oriental churches, the Armenians have little time for the dual nature theory, according to which Jesus was composed of both human and divine natures. Consequently, the main church at Sanahin Monastery is explicitly dedicated not to the Son of Man, but solely to Christ, the Divine Redeemer. The Church of the Redeemer is a bare domed hall constructed between 961 and 972. But Saint Gregory the Illuminator, who brought Christianity to Armenia, is said to have built an initial monastery church here as early as the fourth century on the site of what was perhaps once a pagan temple. Frescoes are rare in Armenia. However, when neighboring Georgia assumed power here in the 12th and 13th centuries, wall painting became fashionable. But after the Georgians departed, these alien frescoes were quickly neglected because even in those days, there was little interest in sculptural depiction. And so, for a long time, the ornament, which can be interpreted as a mystical sign, remained the predominant decoration in churches. Hagpat Monastery, a well-fortified stronghold of the Christian faith. It also preserves a famous collection of kachkas, Stone crosses carved from soft tuff, which are only found in Armenia. They are probably of pagan origin. At the center of these commemorative stones and ledgers, there is always a cross, often framed since the 11th century by elaborate interlace carvings. And yet no two kachkars are the same. 
These double steps refer to Christ's path to Golgotha. While the flower-like tendrils surrounding the cross are the tree of life, a symbol of Christ's death and resurrection. Hagpat Monastery is a place of many treasures. One particular gem is to be found in an inconspicuous passage separating a chapel from a gavit entrance hall. High above the ground, under the arch, but out of reach of any visitor to the monastery, is a sensation the most important example of those extremely rare cross stones that portray human figures. Dating back to 1273, it shows Christ crucified and at his feet, Joseph of Arimathea and Saint Nicodemus. In the case of this Kachkar, the traditional tree of life has given way to the scene of the crucifixion. Christ is the Redeemer, also for an Armenian people oppressed by enemies. That is the message. At the site of the monastery, several centuries ago, a man of learning is said to have exclaimed, San Nahin, which in Armenian roughly means this is older. Since then, Sanahin has been regarded as the elder of the two dissimilar fellow monasteries. The highly esteemed monastery academy was probably founded in Sanahin in the early 11th century by Prince Pahlavuni. It consists of a barrel vault with wall arches, as they're known, and massive buttresses. Pupils sat between them as they studied the wisdom of East and West. And the Armenian language, which belongs to the Indo-Germanic family. Its artistic characters were developed in the late 4th century by the monk Mesrop Mashtots. It's quite dark in here, because the scrolls of parchment belonging to the library at Sanahin and were once stored in this square room with no pillars could not be exposed to bright light. The wall pillars in the library are artistically decorated with varying types of ornamentation. A gem of architectural sculpture, each pillar is dedicated to one of the sciences of the day, like mathematics and theology. The present form of the library dates back to the 13th century. Subdivided into six small columns, this wall pillar is dedicated to the fine arts and the cultural sciences. In its masterliness, the wonderful interlacing is a moving reminder of the days when art and scholarship in Armenia could develop free of external restrictions. The library is the most unusual building at Sanahin, one of the loveliest and most harmonious monastic complexes in the whole of Armenia. <laughs>